You're watching This Week in Space with Miles O'Brien. Hello and welcome to a special edition of This Week in Space. I'm Miles O'Brien, and as you can plainly see, this week we're in Washington, where we are reporting on the first draft of the first page of a new chapter in space for NASA and for manned space flight. As has been long rumored, the Obama administration 2011 budget for NASA calls for the cancellation of the moon program that we call Constellation, a program that the former NASA administrator Mike Griffin once called Apollo on steroids. Really, it never amounted to much more than a 90-pound weakling. Ever since it was announced six years ago by the Bush administration, it was perpetually underfunded and behind schedule. And so now we're on to something new. I caught up with the Deputy Administrator for NASA, Lori Garver, on Budget Day. Lori Garver, uh, good to have you with us on This Week in Space. Uh, it's a sea change for NASA. Uh, what was it like getting to this point? The internal discussions must have been, well, I, I, only, I can only imagine there was a healthy debate. It is a sea change for NASA, and I believe that the president really took the time uh, and was deliberate about how uh, he made this decision. We obviously spent uh, an enormous amount of focus during the Augustine Committee, getting the data together. They, it was a very transparent process. The Augustine Committee uh, reported out their findings. Those were weighed heavily at NASA, the highest levels in the White House, and, and, and a decision was made that we believe is, as you said, just a sea change for the agency, something we've been trying to get back to, certainly for my 25-year policy history. When you look at what Augustine proposed, in reading between the tea leaves what they were endorsing, even though they didn't officially endorse anything, was, was this notion of a flexible path, perhaps going to an asteroid, or maybe, maybe a moon or Mars, whatever the case may be. But one of the things they said was $3 billion more a year to do anything like that. You're not getting $3 billion more a year. So in a sense, is it a disappointment? It's, uh, NASA's been trying to relive Apollo, I think, for the last 40 years, and uh, we, we do not have, uh, nor do we hope to, the same kind of uh, political situation we did at that time that would cause something like a race. Without that, just choosing uh, an arbitrary destination and time doesn't really make sense. So NASA's going back to those kinds of hard things that we do, allowing the commercial industry to have us go further. And I believe that uh, in talking with Norm Augustine and the committee members, they recognize if such a bold decision were made, in fact, you could do exciting things uh, for less than a $3 billion increase a year. But those bold things have never really been uh, laid out politically like they have been now, so it's not a disappointment at all. All right, so what's to say the commercial sector can do the job here? Um, you know, obviously NASA's never built its own rockets. It's always had a commercial partner. What's the difference now? Well, part of the difference is in procurement. This is not going to be your typical cost plus contract. We are going to uh, allow the uh, companies to put some skin in the game, to have some risk at stake, and to be able to do those innovative things that we as the government customer haven't really allowed them to do. A lot of them have been saying to us, if you uh, let up a little, we would be able to do our job better, faster, uh, and in a more efficient way, certainly for the taxpayer. We have been counting on the U.S. aerospace industry and even procuring things commercially for our very, very high value payloads in this country for the military, ensuring the safety of our troops, and for us, those once in a lifetime uh, experiments going out to uh, the outer planets. So the time to allow industry to take the next step uh, to allow our wonderful, precious astronauts to go as well is something we believe they're ready to do. And of course, we won't put anyone on it until they've really tested those vehicles. You know, it's, there's a lot of vested interests in Congress. There's going to be a fight in Congress over this. Uh, Senator Shelby today is quoted as saying this is a slow death march for manned space flight for, uh, for U.S. astronauts. Um, how do you respond to that? We look forward to working with Congress to better explain this program to them. We're just introducing it to them today, and we recognize there are a lot of concerns. We really count on our supporters in Congress, and Senator Shelby, Senator Mikulski are, are two of our strongest supporters in Congress. The appropriators, the authorizers, all will work with us over the coming years, uh, certainly to make sure it is the opposite of a slow death march. This is going to be really the exciting time when we are going into space and we all are going this time on behalf of the taxpayers going to do a better job. I hope Lori's right. I hope we all get a chance to go someday. But the question which comes up in the Constellation Nation time and again is the question of safety. Can these small entrepreneurial firms build rockets that are truly safe for human beings? 
It's a question that Lori's boss, the NASA administrator and four-time shuttle flyer, Charlie Bolden, addressed at the National Press Club this week. There's a misconception that commercial crew means putting our astronauts in the care of untested providers. Quite the contrary. These will be the same providers who will be transporting our multi-billion dollar satellites. America's largest aerospace firms have for decades uh, established expertise in human spaceflight, and they too would be eligible to compete for this program. Of course, the debate is not over by any means. It just moves to that building over there, and there are very powerful people on both sides of the building and both sides of the aisle who have a strong vested interest in Constellation, meaning constituents who are employed by it. Among them, Senator Richard Shelby of Alabama, Marshall Space Flight Center there, he said, among other things, Constellation is the only path forward that maintains America's leadership in space. That's a taste of the debate to come. We also caught up with another key player in all of this, the only sitting member of Congress who's ever flown in space, Senator Bill Nelson of Florida. Senator Bill Nelson, thanks for being with us. Um, first of all, did the, did the decision that came down uh, from the Obama White House in this budget, did it surprise you? Uh, it did in that I thought they would be a little more forthcoming in wanting to aggressively take the testing of Ares and apply it to the development of the new uh, heavy lift vehicle that ultimately will get us out of low Earth, Earth orbit in order to go explore. Um, I thought that they might not put all their eggs in one basket with regard to the commercial boys being successful not only for cargo but for human rating the rockets as being our space taxi to get us up to the International Space Station. And that's a big bet. And if uh, that doesn't work, we're stuck with the Russians for about eight or 10 years. We're, we're left with a series of very bad choices because what's happened over the last uh, decade is NASA hadn't had enough money to develop a new rocket to be ready in time when the space shuttle was gonna shut down. As you said, the president proposes, Congress disposes. Is there going to be a huge debate over this, or do you think that, is it safe to say Constellation, and I mean the whole ball of wax, as it is right now, is dead? Well, Ares 1 doesn't make sense, because it wouldn't be ready until 2018, and then it's a rocket with no mission. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that between the president and the Congress that we're going to be able to work out some accommodation uh, and that we will get our humans back on American rockets as soon as possible. And you're talking about in the commercial sector. You, you have uh, had the experience of strapping yourself to a rocket, a shuttle. How comfortable would you be flying with the likes of SpaceX? Uh, if SpaceX does as it's advertised, it's going to be a lot safer than the space shuttle, but of course they were designing the Ares rocket to be a lot safer than the space shuttle. Either way, we're going to have to do that. You just can't continue to take the risk that the space shuttle program took. Let me ask you this, though. Can the, these small companies, the SpaceX's of the world, the others, can they really do it, though? It's, uh, it's a tall order, isn't it? It is, but we are at a point of our advancement of technology, uh, design, I think they can do it. I just want them to show me. So you're, you're ambivalent about this whole thing. Well, I, I would have a backup uh, to the commercial systems, hoping that it works. If it does, it's a lot cheaper, and they could conceivably have us with humans riding rockets to the space station by 2015 instead of having to wait to 2018. But if it doesn't work, then uh, we're stuck on planet Earth. That's not good. Not at all. Bill Nelson, thanks for your time. One of the interesting things to watch will be some language that was inserted into an appropriations bill at the end of last year by Senator Shelby. It, in effect, gives Congress the right to vote on any decision on Constellation made by the administration. We're going to take a break. Coming up, we're going to check in with one of the Augustine Commission members, Leroy Chow, and then a little bit later, Buzz Aldrin.